What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Storytime. This Storytime goes out to Danny at Mets Rules, who is wanting me to do a Mets Storytime. So today we're going to talk about my favorite player of all time on the Mets, Kevin Mitchell. Most of you guys are probably thinking, out of all the Mets players, how could you like Kevin Mitchell the best? I'm glad you asked that question because I'm going to tell you why Kevin Mitchell is my favorite player. When I was a kid, I used to go to the Tidewater Tides games all the time. Uh, my mom and dad were divorced, so I would when I turned, I think it was 12 or 13, so it would have been around 82, 83, I went down to Tidewater down in Virginia Beach because that's where he was stationed. So I was there from like 83 to 85 every summer watching the Tides. So I got to watch a lot of the players come through, you know, like we saw. I'm thinking about the only player I didn't see whether, you know, go through there as a youngster or come through on rehab or something. I think the only person I didn't see was Strawberry. I saw most of the other people that came through Tidewater. But anyway, this was probably about 83 or 84 and uh, Kevin Mitchell was playing for the Tides. And the thing I remember most about him was he was about six foot tall and about 225 pounds at the time, I think, or 220 pounds or something. But he was he looked like he was really stocky. He had a great big old barrel chest. And the dude was playing shortstop that day. Who the heck is six foot and 225 pounds with a big old barrel chest playing shortstop? It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen in my life. But uh, he was an athlete. He was great. He was a good player. And like I said, he could hit the ball a mile. The, the, the funniest thing I remember about him during that time is he got hit by a pitch. You know, because like I said, he was a good hitter. But some pitcher hit him. And Kevin got mad. So he threw the bat down. He started running out to fight him. As soon as the pitcher saw that, the pitcher ran to center field and jumped over the wall. But before that happened, the catcher tried to get Kevin, like, wrap his arms around him. And Kevin just elbowed the catcher and just, like, knocked him out. Just, like, completely knocked the dude out. So then the first baseman ran over and he tried to grab Kevin. And Kevin just punches him in the face and knocks him to the ground. The third baseman comes, Kevin punches him and knocks him to the ground. At the time, all the benches cleared out. It was Tidewater, I can't remember who they were playing, but all the benches cleared out. And Kevin was just taking out like every single player. And like I said, the pitcher already took off and he jumped over the center field fence. But like I said, the shortstop came over. He's just beating the crap out of every single player that comes to him. And his team went to go run out. And before they even got, they didn't even go over the white line. They all just stopped. I mean, it was a big old line of people just stopped with their mouth open like, holy crap, this dude's just kicking the crap out of the whole team by himself. He doesn't need our help. So nobody got into it. He, he just, like I said, Kevin just beat the crap out of like five or six players. And the rest of the players just stopped coming. They were like, yeah, it was it was like <laughs> what it was like was like a Jackie Chan movie. You guys have seen Jackie Chan movies, probably. You know, he's he's sitting there beating the crap out of some guys and more guys come and beat the crap out of those guys and more guys come and just beats the crap out of it. That's the way it was. It was like a Jackie Chan movie. This guy was just like beating the crap out of everybody. And like I said, you just saw players laying on the ground and and like I said, all the other players were just like, Oh, what the heck? <laughs> And they said, that's, that's my uh, biggest memory about Kevin. Uh, then, and that's the day he became my favorite player. First of all, because he was a big dude. I mean, he was like six foot, 225 pounds, playing shortstop. I mean, you know, it, it was hard. You know, you never saw shortstops, you know, that thick. I mean, he was, he was a thick dude. And, uh, that's why I first started liking him, cause like, cause I was always a big kid. I was probably about the 
13 years old, I was six foot and 220 pounds. So we were probably about the same size. And I was like, oh, that's cool, man. That guy's playing shortstop. That's awesome. And uh, like I said, that's why I first started liking him. And then later on, as the innings went on and he got hit by a pitch and took the whole team on, I was like, oh, yeah, this is the guy I like. So uh, in 19, I don't know, when he became a rookie, I think it was 86 or something, you know, his cards came out. And I was like, man, I'm going to buy up this guy's cards wherever I find him I'm gonna buy every single card I can find so like I said I had you know I was had a sports card shop I think back then so for, I had a card shop from starting from 90 yeah it was before I didn't have a card shop yet so 90s when I had my card shop but uh, I was doing card shows since 86 so I would go to all the, every card show I went to I would look through everybody's common box and quarter box and dollar box whatever box they had and when it was all said and done i think i had uh about i had almost a thousand 87 tops rookies and i had about 55 87 fleer rookies and i probably had 50 of everything else like the 86 fleer update and the 86 whatever you know update and and i had probably like 50 some 87 fleers but I remember when he had that, remember he had that big breakout year when he won the MVP and his cards just shot up like crazy. And even though he was my favorite player, like I said, that by this time, you know, I think I, I might have had my shot by then. So even though he was my favorite player, I saw those cards go up from like, you know, a dollar up to like $15 or something. I mean, they were going for, for big money when he was winning the MVP. And I went, I sold all those cards like in like two three weeks time i went every card show i would go to i would stop at every single dealer and every single dealer i mean he was hot so every single dealer bought like 10 20 some of them bought like 100 cards and i was getting i think three dollars a piece for like the tops rookies and i was getting like eight dollars a piece or six dollars a piece for the fleer rookies and five dollars a piece for the donner's rookies and almost all those cards i paid a quarter or less for i, I bought thousands of them so uh, I made so much money off him, so he was he was such. I said he brings me such good memories of, of you know watching those games and and then like I said all the money that I made on him. Uh, but he was my favorite player, and like I said I met him several times after that. He was with the Indians, and uh, I know when I, when he was with the Indians he was probably he looked like he was pushing about two hundred and eighty eighty pounds probably. I wish he would have you know, continued his MVP of playing days. I don't know what happened to him. Like, see, he won the MVP, and it just, I don't know. It just, he kind of fell apart or something after that. But like I said, that's my story about Kevin Mitchell. Hopefully you liked it, Danny. Have a good one, guys. Please like, please subscribe, please press all that way you see all my videos. Peace. Thanks.